concert movement number one. The basic head bob. Ready, go. All right. We're going to go with you on a uh, Monday afternoon with the world's worst wireless. Maybe we should get upgrade our equipment to two tin cans and a string. I, I, and I, I do not in any way, shape, or form. I was thinking flashlight point. messaging. There you go. Hey, if it works in the movie Battleship, it can work for all of us. There you go. Now we need a bunch of old people and the USS Missouri, and let's get to work. All right, phone number is 244-0077. The email address, radiobreadshaw at gmail.com. And always, you can find me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash radiobreadshaw for uh, lots of snarky things. A lot of stuff to get to. Friday got taken sideways. Um, so I, I was experiencing beige. I, I, I couldn't figure out what your problem was. I tried to hang up on him several times. <laughs> No, I, I was like I was, was debating how much how mad you'd get if I just dropped him. I, you know, just felt like walking death, like like for no reason at all. It felt like a bus uh, hit me, and I, I I knew when I got up it would be a day of punishment, and I was right. Uh, not just because like, I didn't feel well and the like, but also, uh, yeah, got like sixty minutes plus of of Frank. He actually sent me a very nice email. Thanks, with two exclamation points. You know it's serious. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> that he wanted to thank me for that because he has a lot to say. I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I Notice I haven't given him my email address. Uh, it's just, yeah. All right, a lot to get to uh, today because... Had to make up for it. The president uh, held a press conference today. Uh, it was nice to see Major Garrett back in action. Remember, he was the uh, Fox News guy who uh, is now at CBS. But he's still doing Fox News stuff. I was kind of... Uh, but some some good signs uh, from that. Uh, gun chat again. More, I mean, it, it's just a point where it's, it's, a, it's a crazy uh, amount of shooting. But one of the, I think, real holdups um, to a debate is a lack of, of good information about the actual effect uh, guns have on society. But that's not just a, a fluke of, of history. Uh, that was part of the plan, I will explain. Uh, and uh, I've been saying for, for years now that, that Glenn Beck has become a televangelist, basically a right-wing uh, televangelist. And he, he, apparently he's going to spend $2 billion doing his, well, $2 billion of someone else's money, doing his damnedest to prove uh, me right. So first off, President talking today uh, about our next uh, made-up, false controversy slash hostage situation, uh, and that is the debt ceiling. And when we came to a fiscal cliff deal at the last minute, uh, I am still of the belief we should have just gone over the cliff and dealt with it then, but I didn't win in November, so unlike Republicans, I'm not going to try to call all the shots. Uh, the president speaking to the press today, and a good sign. Uh, the right for the last two years uh, has done their best to muddy the waters, sow confusion, FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt, uh, when it comes to what the debt ceiling actually does. Uh, when Republicans first held it hostage in 2011, uh, there was very little talk uh, about what the debt ceiling uh, actually did. And, and, Democrats in the House and the Senate and the president uh, did an absolutely horrible job uh, explaining what was going on. Uh, anyone who directly ties the debt ceiling, the debt limit, whatever you want to call it, uh, to spending is lying to you. Uh, 
I noticed this this last week on my my way in. I, I tuned in some Huckabee, and you know, for the guy that replaced him, very poorly. I gotta admit, he has improved. Credit where credit is due. I I now can't tell most of the time um, when he is lying versus when he just has no idea what he's talking about. That's a big step. You talking about Huckabee? Yeah. Oh. Um, Okay, at some point, I guess, you know, that whole, you know, do talk radio thing professionally comes in conflict with, you know, uh, not bearing false witness. And I, I, I guess the radio side has won. To be fair, the Ten Commandments don't pay a lot of bills. So yeah, you do what you got to do. Um, but a lot of talk on the right about how somehow the, the debt ceiling creates rampant spending. Uh, and the, the president, again, there's a difference, I think, between you know using metaphor to make something that is confusing understandable um, and then to make it less understandable. The folks trying to compare uh, the national budget to a home you know, budget. Uh, now maybe your home has a standing army or something, and maybe it's comparable, or maybe... You do print currency uh, in the basement. Uh, not a lot of uh, comparison there. But when it comes to uh, the debt ceiling, I think the president uh, laid it out. And I hope this is the messaging going forward. I, I hope if Republicans want to hold you know, the debt ceiling hostage, give us what we want or this nation gets it, uh, we can unmuddy those waters. And I think the president... Again, who at his core, I think, is more than willing to make those cuts to Social Security, make those cuts uh, to Medicare as part of a a grand bargain. I mean, I I really think he is that focused on bipartisanship and getting above the the fray. Um, And I think it's taken him. Uh, far too long uh, to understand that no quarter will be given, no credit will be given. You, know, you can come to Republicans like he did in 2011 with a grand bargain in the middle of a recession, $4 trillion in cuts, cuts to Medicare, cuts to Social Security, cuts to TRICARE, things that Republicans cannot touch. A Democrat was willing to fondle them for them. Luckily, they're so dysfunctional, they couldn't take the deal. Uh, If they had just been able to accept victory, spike a football, do the electric slide, and run off the field, uh, the House, Senate, and possibly the White House would look a lot different uh, today. So their dysfunction... Uh, has certainly helped him out, and I, and somewhere along the line, I don't know if the, the 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 flip switched. Maybe it's just the dimmer has come up a little bit. Let's go with that. Maybe it was one of those multi-touch ones. He's made it to like setting two, uh, and realized that no matter what you put up, uh, the right is going to fight uh, for absolute. I don't know, maybe he bought the messaging, too. Maybe he really thought that Republicans cared about debt deficit spending, et cetera, not just uh, about tax cuts for rich people. But uh, we saw today very clearly the president saying, yet there will be no bargaining, there will be no hostage situation uh, when it comes to the debt ceiling. And we got a couple, let me be clear. So that's when you know the president is serious. And what he said, and what he should have said, you know, a year and a half ago, is this doesn't spend any money. It doesn't allocate any cash. It doesn't uh, appropriate any money uh, to be spent. It solely allows the government to pay the bills that Congress, including the Republican House of Representatives, have authorized. It covers the spending that Congress has authorized. And he 
think this was very apt. The Temerians would be proud. Um, we can't go out to dinner at a nice restaurant right, and then not pay the bill. Now, you can argue, should we go to such a nice restaurant? I don't know. What are the deals at Bonanza these days? But you, no matter, you've gone to the restaurant, you have to pay the bill. That's I think that's something that is readily understandable. Uh, and it is a message that was missing uh, from National Democrats a year and a half ago. And again, I don't think that uh, message missing was, un, you know, I don't think that was an oopsie or we forgot or, well, we just hadn't thought of this flowery language. You know, the same president who sends his, you know, millions of, you know, email followers a request to write a letter to your editor saying, uh, what a great job the president was doing, you know, freezing federal pay rates. Um, a man who, to his detriment, you know, believes that, hey, austerity is great. It's working well in Europe. Why not? Uh, has finally seen the light. There is no possibility uh, of a grand bargain. There is no possibility uh, of a give and get and you know actual negotiations. And part of that is there, there's no real Republican leadership to negotiate with. Doesn't matter what deal you strike with Boehner, he's got you know, wing nuts. No matter what deal you strike with, with Mitch McConnell. Because all it takes is one senator to completely stop the works. There is no leader. There is no some person, uh, one person or, or group of people with you know, overall influence uh, to get anything done. There's no one to play ball with. So it was good to see the president lay that out you know, very starkly. And, of course, when you know the stenographers, a.k.a. press, start asking their question, um, he laid out the case like this wasn't like a hostage situation before 2011. This is new from the Republicans, and we need to find new ways of dealing with this. If brinksmanship fails this time for Republicans, if it fails to uh, further their goals, it would not surprise me. Uh, and long term, I think this is the inevitable outcome. Uh, the debt ceiling is something that gets kicked uh, to the president's desk. Congress wipes their hands of it. Because it is mostly because of misinformation and disinformation, a very unpopular thing to do. The Michelle Bachman supporters of the world have done a very good job of misidentifying what the debt ceiling actually does. It doesn't spend any money. It just allows the executive branch, which does not control spending, mind you. That's Congress's role, as much as they would like to punt. It allows the executive to cover the bills that Congress rings up. And Hopefully, we see more of this uh, moving forward. Hopefully. Uh, but I think there are some very potent messaging uh, persons uh, on the right that are doing everything they can to confuse the issue. And they've done a very good job. They've been very effective. Uh, I hope the president sticks to his guns here. And... We're not going to negotiate over this. This isn't a hostage situation. Um, now it seems the, the latest move is to confuse not raising the debt ceiling with a government shutdown. Those are two separate issues. Uh, somewhere along the lines on the right, uh, they've convinced themselves, and this is the problem with reading your own press clippings, they've convinced themselves that they somehow won uh, the government shut down battles of the 1990s. Uh, 
historical revisionism is a very dangerous drug. Uh, so in the talk that we should shut down the government again because it worked out so well for us before, why won't everyone just agree with us that the government is the most horrible, awful thing uh, ever? That gets wrapped into the debt ceiling uh, discussion. Understand, the, the consequences for a default uh, would be beyond catastrophic. Uh, you are talking global, worldwide meltdown, as the United States uh, is the, the go-to currency. Uh, we are the go-to nation for safe debt holding. Uh, it's why we can't, you know, the price, when they, they put our bonds up for auction, uh, the return on investment is, is lower than inflation, uh, but it is absolutely rock solid, uh, guaranteed. Uh, it is hard to put a couple billion dollars into a checking account. FDIC won't cover that much. Um, mattresses aren't that large. I'm willing to try. <laughs> no, I say there are very few places, you know, where you can put that amount of money. Uh, U.S. Treasuries uh, are one of those places. Our bonds uh, are a good landing pad for that. Uh, that would disappear uh, overnight. Even the 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 threat of default. Weakens that. We are the reserve currency of the world. Uh, that goes away. Um, and any economic crash, as we learned in 2008, uh, the world economy is so interconnected. Uh, the same way, if the Eurozone were to go under, uh, it would be catastrophic in the U.S. If the U.S. Uh, were to default, you're looking at, well, downright biblical ramifications uh, worldwide. And while Republicans might not be bright, they're not that stupid. I think even in her heart of hearts, the black, withered piece of coal that Michelle Bachman uh, possesses, uh, they understand that that's not an option. I think the sad part is there are probably too many Republicans who see that as the ideal solution. The Norquist types. Your John Birchers. So, we'll see. Um, I just want to know why we can't get serious talk about, you know, forget cutting the welfare. So where's the talk of enlarging it? And making that case and showing data. You know, even the wingnuts agree, right? World War II uh, pulled us out of the Great Depression. Well, how did it do that? What did we do specifically? Well, we spent a crap ton of money. Why not do that again? Uh, one thing we will not, by the way, uh, be spending a crap ton of money on. Very disappointed in this. Uh, this YouGov site, right, where anyone can put together a petition. If it gets 25,000 signatures, uh, you will get an official response uh, from uh, the White House. Uh, for example, the uh, innumerable uh, petitions uh, for secession because a black guy was reelected president. Um, those got a very, um, well, undeservingly polite uh, response that basically boiled down to, you tried it before and it didn't work so well. So you're not free to go. Uh, one that I was looking forward to, uh, but apparently has been turned down, uh, is the official White House uh, request to secure resources and funding uh, to begin construction of a Death Star by 2016. We have been turned down. You know, at least they were humorous about it, though. Well, you said you were uh, upset with Obama. You were disappointed. That Wait, I, I did. I, I said this is just this 
tags onto the reason because you know Reagan would have been all over this. They they tried uh, to do this in the most wasteful way, so possible. But I, my point, but, uh, see, I, which I think is fair, if this had happened during the Bush administration, Dick Cheney would have personally authorized the CIA to travel to every petition signer's home and give them either a swirly, uh, wedgie, uh, noogie, or a wet willy. Yeah, but or we, nobody, them into who a likes locker. Bush? I mean, I mean, really, find me a Bush fan and I'll call them a liar. Um, you know, I just, it's one of those things where Dude, they, had, they, I, it's, they it's, put up miss me yet. Billboards. It's a screw you. I got mine. If we had a fully operation death, uh, operational Death Star, I would just be really excited about where this is going. Well, now, Paul uh, Shawcross wrote the official response. Uh, I posted it on my Twitter feed at Radio Bradshaw that the administration shares your desire for job creation and a strong national defense, but a Death Star isn't on the horizon. Here are a few reasons. Construction of the Death Star has been estimated to cost uh, 850, I think that's quadrillion. Yeah, I don't know. They clearly Uh, made up a number. Well, no, I mean, they actually backed up. uh, The folks at uh, Lehigh University estimated what it would cost uh, to build a Death Star. So they're using actual research here. Um, the administration does not support blowing up planets. Uh, and why would we spend countless taxpayer dollars on a Death Star with a fundamental flaw that can be exploited by a one-man starship? Did I mention this is an official White House response? Uh, they go on to uh, expound upon the virtues of the International Space Station. Um, private companies through, and this is why I, I love NASA. And when I was in, in Houston, I didn't have a lot of time, but I made sure to make a stop at uh, Johnson Space Center. Uh, National NASA's Commercial Crew and Cargo Program Office. The acronym: Commercial Crew Cargo. Yeah, it's C three PO. Um for private companies to haul astronauts and cargo uh, to the moon. said, we don't have a Death Star, but we do have floating robot assistants, nicknamed R2, uh, on the space station, a president who knows his way around a lightsaber, and the Defense uh, Advanced Research Projects a- Project Agency, DARPA, uh, which is supporting research on building Luke's arm, floating droids, and quadruped walkers. <laughs> um, goes on to make a pitch for uh, STEM, education, science, technology, uh, engineering, math. And then if you do pursue a career in science, technology, engineering, or math-related fields, the force will be with us. Remember, the Death Star's power to destroy a planet or even a whole star system it's, is insignificant next to the power of the force. Um, now, when Paul Shawcroft um, was appointed chief of the science and space branch uh, at the White House Office of Management and Budget, did you ever think in a million years, you think the thought it crossed his mind, you know, I'm gonna, I at some point have to write uh, a response in Star Wars language. Yeah, I definitely appreciated that he kept the link, you know, like he, he, he it sounded like he knew what he was talking about. I, he clearly had some advisors there's a Star Wars nerd somewhere in the oh, White yes. House. Yeah, I'm sure there are more than a few. So you ever watch The West Wing? Uh, no, I don't. I really don't like politics. The uh, West Wing was a very good, but it was about politics, was it not? I mean, it was about the White House. But that's like saying Mash was about war. Yeah, but I try not to watch Mash either. It was pretty awful. Mash is awful. I'm not going to take that back. You like MASH? MASH is is a classic. Now, there are classics that I think it's, it's a classic are, are that's overrated. I, re- I realize that our parents liked MASH, but that still doesn't make it good or entertaining. They also like Dallas, and Dallas, Dallas is horrible. Dallas had its moments. Dallas Dude, an did entire not. nation. I mean, you're, maybe, you're too young. 
an entire nation was wrapped up in who shot Jr. I, I understand that, and I'm not it was too like young. The I, re- I remember television it. event. I remember Other Dallas. Than my the grandpa Mash watched. My, my grandpa watched this. He wa- he'd watch Mash in Dallas every chance he could. What were his thoughts on Falcon Crest? I don't know. I didn't pay attention because I don't like these things. MacGyver. MacGyver's great. Yeah, MacGyver's but, our generation, though, for but sure. There's different tastes. Yeah, but MacGyver's hilarious. You need two gun wrappers and a piece of wire, and you've got an atomic bomb. Or yeah. you could at least stop. Or a, a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, a bomb on a cruise ship. That was one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. Or if you're going to lock up the A team, don't do it in a warehouse full of supplies because they're going to build a tank. You know that always. What? Why, where did they always have welders? I, I would like a welder. Nobody has ever locked me into building where just rampant welders and free steel. They're everywhere, uh, apparently. Uh, the the thing the about A-team. the A team that bothers me the most is for army trained people, they're the worst shots ever. Yeah, I, but I mean, these are supposed to be our best of our best, and they couldn't hit crap. You know and, how well, concerned. Well, same thing I, with GI Joe. It, I'd be very concerned. Yeah, but GI Joe was like a cartoon. No one ever shot anyone and everyone always parachuted away in time always and yet never got shot while parachuting no I, the, the battle android troopers though you could blow those away you could show those yeah getting ripped to shreds but can't shoot the baroness no matter how much she deserves it let's go we are we are living it, it is a new day here no there was an episode of the west wing where someone wears their star trek pin to work in in toby's uh, no not it was josh's office and they have a, like a conversation about why you shouldn't wear that into the the workplace. And, but those people are out there. And did it circle around a one world government? No, it was, uh, actually ended up on uh, do a good enough job, and maybe we'll make a Star Trek holiday. <clears throat> Is it any coincidence that Captain Picard Day has taken off since then? June sixteenth, then. I know. I was here last time we yeah. had that. Other years we've had cake. But you didn't bring cake this year. No, I had to deliver it. People like sent me a Captain Picard Day cake. You know what? Your it's fans, children. your fans are not as good now. You no. you must have lost them because it's, I would have gladly accepted cake. It was on an your ice behalf. cream cake. You're just making me mad at you. No, not you know. If they were really a fan, it would have been uh, the Counselor Troy cake. <laughs> you remember would. that episode? <laughs> Uh, no, but I know who Counselor Troy is, so I'm just going to use my imagination. Law, it's a long story that I am not going to get into, but at, at one point in the series, and yes, they were running out of gas at the time, uh, she turned into a cake. Uh, also, uh, Data had, uh, the, the uh, you could open him up and there was an old rotary phone. So it was the world's first Android phone. Bada be. Uh, if you are a real The Next Generation fan, that's how it would have gone. All right, we're going to take a break now before we really go uh, to a bad place. Uh, when we come back, Nazis, guns, and Glenn Beck. We're really highbrow today. Uh, here on the Bradshaw Show and Webcast One Live. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you in a minute. I'm just saying. 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 Ching, ching. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying.
Well, hi, I'm Rob Spearman. I'm a broker owner of REMAX Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you, experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. Hi, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. And he said not only would he like to be a sponsor, but he would offer a $100 tithe for every customer that came and bought a car from him directly to the church of your choice. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales. Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John. Big John. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Hello, party people. Uh, 202 on a Monday. On this is the 14th day uh, of the year. It's cold. Where the, I miss those 50 degree weather days. I don't know what happened. I was enjoying my nicely warm winter. Everything was melting. And then the last, over the weekend, it's oh. just ridiculously cold. And it's one of those, yeah, where yeah, it was okay. like seven yesterday. Yeah, where it says like 18. And then you go outside, and it feels like negative. Well, and try having a mustache where a little bit of the moisture gets caught, and it just starts freezing to it, and you're just like, really? No. No, 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 no. Um, just real quick, because I don't spend a ton uh, of time, because it has yet to be written, but today is is day one uh, at the State House, and it's almost like we're it, the lead up to to Christmas. I mean, like a advent calendar or something each day some new little piece of crazy uh comes out on you must get some horrible christmas presents on on day four it's like ooh, who doesn't love you ken Sorensen and the death penalty because it's what jesus would do oh. we'll see it'd be interesting to watch moving into 2014 as the the parties kind of get their, their stances set, uh, especially for the governor's race. I was having that conversation uh, with some unknown associates before uh, the show, and there, there's real talk that Branstad isn't going to run again, uh, be it, you know, age reasons. Uh, I think one of the, the big ones is I, I don't think he's having as much fun uh, as he expected to. I think the the scenarios that were laid out, uh, promises made uh, by the folks who write really big checks, uh, who got his feet off the desk at Des Moines University and back uh, into politics, uh, I think they were writing checks that, uh, well, his butt can't cash. Uh, I don't think he quite understood where the Republican Party has gone uh, since he was last uh, in office. And if anything, I think it'd be those kind of Republicans. Now, I know a number of them uh, didn't win re-election, so maybe that's a moot point now, but certainly uh, the first couple of years. Uh, and I do think it'll be uh, Kim Reynolds as the Republican nominee. Now, the question is, will the nutballs pull a Vander Plaats, and will there be a primary race? I don't know. I, I, I think uh, you, can, you can primary uh, Terry Branstad. He's potent enough that it's not really a concern. 
uh, I think a lot of effort would be uh, spent uh, protecting Kim Reynolds' uh, right flank, but we'll see. Uh, one thing, I guess, today's Advent calendar, it's not a little piece of chocolate. It's the governor's education uh, package. And I think the most disturbing thing about this um, is I actually I, I like what I read. Um, let me explain. Um, and yes, the devil is always in the details, and I'm sure just looking at the headlines, um, governor's talking about dropping a couple hundred million dollars on education in the state. And not, by the way, on... Um, installing a dinosaur with a saddle on it in every elementary school in Iowa. Which is typically where those uh, types of education uh, bills go. It's a, a raise in starting teacher pay, uh, up to $35,000 a year. Um, which is still, like I said, low for, su- for a job that requires... Uh, higher and specialized education. Not only do you have to get uh, you know, your teacher degree, certificate, you're talking like postgraduate uh, work uh, to be a teacher. Um, it would also kind of create tiers of teachers, and th- those top tiers, um, mentor and lead teachers, would spend less time in, in, in classrooms and more time uh, mentoring, teaching, uh, passing on, you know, just career and institutional knowledge uh, to younger teachers. Uh, Whereas an entry-level teacher would also spend less time in the classroom and more time in personal development. Um, These all sound uh, great, uh, but we'll see what details uh, come in, just because when you get, you know, Branstad, Jason Glass together. I, 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 I don't trust them. Uh, we've been burned by the Michelle Rees of the world. Remember when she was a superstar? Uh, and it was, yeah, it was a Democrat who opened the door uh, for her. Uh, Fenty in D.C. comes in. You know, she's the she's the miracle worker. I, 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 I. And it turns out it was a massive uh, cheating scandal. It's almost like if you solely judge teachers by test scores, they might have some incentive uh, to change those. Shocker. Uh, And now she uh, makes a living basically going around. Uh, At this point, it's fair to say anyone in the education reform business uh, is in the uh, the privatize it and let's bilk the taxpayers uh, for it. Michelle uh, Re, in spite of her own you know personal failings, I, I guess is an effective uh, figurehead because they send her all over the country making these uh, pitches for education reform, aka add a profit motive. Uh, but again, whether it's Branstead and Glass bringing in Chris Christie, now this this is pre you know hey. Republicans screwed me on Sandy Relief uh, and more of the keynote speaker at the RNC. Uh, but they brought Chris Christie in uh, to their education summit. And uh, I'm still waiting for an answer uh, from Jason. It's been a couple years. One might not be coming. Um, the only expertise uh, Chris Christie has shown when it comes to education is uh, picking fights with teachers unions. Uh, a popular uh, topic on the right. Uh, that's about it. So I'm still waiting for an answer as to uh, when it comes to actually educating children, uh, what does Chris Christie uh, bring to the table other than perhaps a before picture in health class? Still waiting for the after. Uh when you bring these guys together, and I've, I told you the story of Isaiah McGee. Uh, 
he was Branstad's pick to re- lead the, the civil rights uh, division in the state and was such a train wreck. I mean, just from day one, hour one, second one, uh, came in. It was such an unmitigated disaster. Before even being confirmed, like, wasn't smart enough just to sit in a big office, collect a large paycheck, and wait to be confirmed, you know, by the Senate. No, no, he came in day one and was such uh, a disaster. You had people leaving the department, uh, others making a point to find the media to tell everyone what a disaster. Uh, He was not uh, confirmed uh, by the Senate. So instead, and I'm still waiting to hear exactly what qualified him for this, uh, Branstead hooked him up with an $80,000 a year consulting job for the Department of Education. Because, you know, educating kids is not important. That is a patronage position, apparently. Next thing you know, they're putting uh, Arabian horse lawyers in charge of FEMA or something. What could go wrong there? Uh, Point being, this Isaiah McGee fellow... Uh, now in the education business, uh, was ranting and raving on Twitter over the weekend, uh, complaining that we teach five-year-olds about dinosaurs. Uh, and I, I think the just the, the piece de resistance of his argument uh, was, uh, who has ever gotten a job, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, based on their dinosaur knowledge other than paleontologists? Because, you know, why aren't we teaching our kindergartners job skills? I mean, hello, Newt Gingrich may have been on to something. Of course, when Newt Gingrich is on to something, that doesn't stop him from being on something else, in spite of whatever vows he has taken. But that's neither here nor there. But like, <laughs> like, why are we teaching kids about dinosaurs? You're in the education business, and you don't understand, you know, the basis of uh, getting children excited about learning, which is hard enough. Like, if your job is to get children excited about, I don't know, snack food, easy job. Uh, if, you're, if your job is to get uh, children excited about watching TV, very easy job. Excited about learning is a little more difficult. The degree of difficulty is, is up here. And uh, honestly, if that, I mean, if that is a foreign concept to you, uh, an idea you find antagonistic. Uh, I don't know if education is necessarily the field for you, but then I realized that uh, he's not in the education business. He's in the getting paid by Terry Branstad business, in which case he is an absolute uh, success. So kudos. Um, so we'll have to dig in here. I know it makes changes about school districts' abilities to to do with education uh, funding shortfalls. For example, when Wingnuts want to arm, and they're actually doing this at a a, a school district in Ohio, want to arm the janitors. Now think back to your your high school, high school, middle school. uh, Do you want your janitors strapped and packing heat? You, lowest rung on the totem pole who gets, in some cases, literally crapped on. Do we want to give those people uh, firearms? So when the wing nuts and Ken Sorensen, so, sorry, I repeat myself. Uh, you know, say, hey, we need to give every teacher an AR-15, you know, I don't know, for Jesus or something. Uh, school districts will be limited under Brandstad's bill on how they can raise the funds uh, for dealing with that. So uh, the devil's always in the details. The headlines look great. Uh, I'm I'm just afraid of what's in, in paragraph five. And I don't know, it just made its debut today. We'll know more uh, as we uh, dig into it uh, over the coming uh, weeks in legislative session. And who knows what, uh, maybe there's a gay marriage ban somewhere buried into it. I, I wouldn't expect less crazy uh, from Republicans. Uh, earlier in the show, I mentioned the president's press conference. One of the, the issues brought up was uh, guns 
and you know waiting for uh, president or vice president uh, Joe Biden's blue ribbon panel commission report delegation uh, and certainly hasn't stopped the the gun conversation from getting into the, the land of of crazy um one interesting piece, and kudos to to Mother Jones. Okay, I, I got to say this again. Have I don't know if there is a news organization, periodical publishing, uh, who has stepped their game up more uh, than Mother Jones. Because if you would ask me two or three years ago, yeah, you know, it's the the journalistic uh, equivalent of like I don't know, Peter Gals wearing lettuce, like not all that informative occasionally eye-catching. Uh, but an era of, you know, where publications are, are going under uh, like crazy, uh, especially any of them that involve uh, dead trees. Uh, we're seeing, you know, slashbacks and, and cuts. And Mother Jones has taken it really to uh, another level, and I, I cannot speak highly uh, enough of them. They have really done a great job. Everything, you know, the, the, that forty-seven percent tape from Mitt Romney—that was a Mother Jones uh, drop. They don't get enough credit uh, for that. But just the the day-to-day reporting, uh, their front page is still a, a bit of an HTML nightmare. But uh, from the content side, I don't know if there's anyone doing it better uh, these days. And considering, you know, where they kind of came from where they are now, miles apart. Cannot speak highly enough uh, of them. Uh, did a look uh, at the favorite uh, canard from the rise. You know, you know who else banned guns? That's right. Hitler. Uh, funny thing about that. Because um, if you're like me and you read a lot of, you know, uh, Nazi hate far-right literature... To them, Hitler is a well, a lot of things, but a very pro gun for the right people uh, sort of dude. So, uh, Gavin Aronson, see the one who went to Iowa State, uh, actually did a bit of looking at it, and it turns out, uh, lo and behold, uh, something that the NRA and gun rights supporters are saying isn't necessarily true, and I know you're shocked by this. Turns out, the the National Socialist Nazi uh, regime uh, did not ban guns, so to speak, uh, in Germany. We did. You and I, in particular. Uh, the Weimar Republic, uh, generally used as a name to help sell you gold, uh, actually banned nearly all gun ownership. That's the pre that's the post World War One, uh, pre Nazi uh, Germany. Uh, banned nearly all gun ownership, uh, not because they were, you know, pinko leftist uh, peaceniks. Uh, they were doing it to comply with the Treaty of Versailles. That was the highly punitive document we forced Germany uh, to sign after World War One. So to comply with Treaty of Versailles, or Republic, uh, banned nearly all guns. Uh, in 1928, uh, those rules were loosened. Gun permits were granted to citizens, quote, of undoubted reliability. Uh, some persons were barred from owning guns, uh, specifically gypsies by name, uh, which based on you know, the reality TV shows might not have been a bad idea. And then in 1938... Uh, a year before uh, war broke out. It was uh, the Nazis actually uh, relaxed uh, gun laws. Uh, Rifle and shotgun possession was deregulated, uh, along with gun access for hunters. Uh, Nazi members, not, you know, just the party members, uh, and government officials uh, had their gun rights expanded Jews, however, were prohibited from owning firearms because I guess they plan ahead. Uh, so 
just something to uh, ponder uh, next time some wing net uh, brings that up. Actually, the Nazis did expand uh, gun rights. Uh, you know who actually does a very good job of restricting gun rights? Gun shows. I found this and saw it was interesting. Uh, the folks over at Center for American Progress uh, came up with this. 51 gun shows All right. uh, in January. Uh, ban attendees from bringing loaded guns into the premises. Which would seem to go against the whole stated notion of you know, direct reverence of the, the Second Amendment, except for that well-regulated militia uh, section. Right? An armed society is a polite society. Uh, more guns equal less crime. But uh, these gun shows do not allow loaded guns. We respectfully request you do not bring any loaded firearm into the gun show. Safety is our number one priority. Mine too! But it kind of lays to bear the whole craziness of the See, we need guns to protect ourselves from people who have guns, to protect themselves from people who have guns, to protect themselves from people who have... So on uh, and so forth. Uh, but as many chinks in, in that argument and that set of armor we can come up with, uh, the better. Still waiting and to all the, the hyperbole and hyperventilating. And, uh, in the case, I think it was Friday, uh, Matt Drudge of the Drudge Report literally putting up pictures of Hitler and Stalin um, to compare them to the, the president's idea for, uh, for gun uh, legislation. Uh, certainly a lot of, of hyperventilating and a lot of uh, overblown rhetoric. And it was Duncan Black. Made a very good point. Is the gun use fantasy. Uh, that little nugget of desire that lives in the heart. I, th I think it was part of the motivation for getting a concealed weapons permit. For buying, you know, these outrageously powerful Weapons. Uh, it's very similar I think, to buying a lottery ticket. When you buy a lottery ticket, not because you think you're going to win, because no one's really that deluded, but you buy it for the fantasy. Oh man, I can't, when I have a hundred million dollars, I'm you know, going to do this and buy that and hold this over my high school tormentor's head. I'm going to pay people, you know, fifty thousand dollars a pop just to punch themselves in the face as hard as they can. It's the, the same type of motivation for the concealed weapons partner. But instead of, you know, this wonderful life I'm going to lead after winning the lottery, it's like, I'm going to get to blow someone away. Um, which should, I think, scare people. Again, it's, it's a parallel track uh, that leads to, to crazy land. Now, I'd love to you know, give you more information as to how likely that is. Uh, but it turns out uh, we don't have a lot of that info. Uh, and hopefully this is something that comes up as we continue our national discussion about what to do uh, with handguns, semi-automatic weapons, you know, high-capacity magazines, uh, and the like. Is there, there is a, a real dearth of actual, you know, study when it comes to, to guns. And that's not an accident. That wasn't an oopsie. It's not an oversight. Uh, and it goes back a, a few years uh, with the CDC. And a, a fine fellow by the name of Art Kellerman decided to look into the rationale of many gun owners, you know, to protect my family, to protect my home, etc. <coughs> and it was Art Kellerman 
who did the research determined you were 43 times more likely all right, to have that gun used in the death uh, of just a regular person in the house, be it through accidental shooting, suicide, uh, 43 times more likely to be involved in the death of a, a family member in that home than to stop an armed intruder. That research caused uh, the righties to freak out. And the next year, uh, that amount, uh, I don't know the exact amount, say, you know, the CDC spent $150,000. Well, guess what their budget was diminished by? with the you know unspoken threat of, we'll do more. Uh, in 2011, just to take it one step further, Todd Tierhart from Kansas uh, put legislation uh, to keep the Justice for Department uh, from reporting uh, on a number of gun statistics. Uh, it's almost as if these folks know they have a losing argument and don't want to have it. And I, I hope this is something that gets more attention uh, as the debate uh, moves forward. And I'd like to think that a, a lot of the, the crazy we get in gun chat uh, stems from the unknown. We don't know what the Biden commission is going to report. We don't know what congressional action uh, will be taken. And it's almost as if uh, the mind that believes they have to be, you know, armed at all times and on the lookout, might be a little more open to paranoia. Uh, I like to think that perhaps when we have specifics to talk about, uh, gun chat will tone down uh, somewhat from the land of, of crazy and the land of Godwin. Uh, I just have a feeling, again, these folks know they have a losing hand. They want to do everything they can to shut down uh, the debate, change the topic, talk about anything else, blame Marilyn Manson, blame Patrick Bateman, feed me a stray cat, um, anything uh, than having an actual discussion because they know it's a loser for them. All right, just two minutes left, and I have to, does this count as two minutes hate? It's not. It's really pity. Um, you hear you about mean you're actually going to stop at your allotted time schedule? Mm. I mean, I had to listen to like an extra eight <laughs> minutes of Frank. That was a Friday. Got to get down on Friday. Next time, I'm going to turn you off. No, I. I what do, What do you th What do you think about televangelists? Depends on which one. Are there any that you particularly like? Not, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Um, Glenn Beck is turning into a. Uh, a televangelist, not just in the the content of the show where he basically preaches salvation. He's starting. Did you ever go to Heritage USA? No. I'm trying to think. Of, what were some of the other like Jesusy themed theme parks? Hmm. Heritage USA was the yeah. The, I don't know. I never the big one, and that was Jim Baker. Yeah, Jim that, and Tammy I, Faye I know. Who it, I know who it is. It's the but it was like the number three but for they a time. All, they all tourist. ended up in prison on tax evasion, and. <laughs> there's a reason for it. I mean, these things are built as 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 Ponzi schemes and scams. And well, I don't even. But I Glenn Beck announced plans to build a a a two billion dollar. Uh, I wish I had Glenn Beck's money. I'd throw mine away. Well, uh, dude, that ain't Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck ain't got two billion dollars. And somebody's gonna get ripped off. I'm I'm calling my shot now. Is it going to be called, like, Freedom Land? I, I don't know exactly what the—I I think they're literally going to aim it after uh, Galt's Gulch from the Ayn Rand uh, huh. books. But it, you can take it, like, deprogram your, your kids and elected officials, so it's going to be the worst amusement park uh, on Earth. <laughs> Here, kids, take, uh, a, take this ride. It's a constitutional trip. It's almost as good as the Citadel. 
uh, these folks in Idaho wanting to build their own walled compound with guns and more guns. And I want to build that, though. That's sweet. But, I mean, Glenn Beck, literally, it was the only thing missing was his Crystal Cathedral or Heritage USA or Dollywood, whatever. And now these are, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's a little silly. Uh, someone's going to prison. Well, hopefully it's Beck. Pro- probably more than one person is going to prison over this deal. Um, I don't remember how long it took from the, the founding of Heritage USA uh, to, you know... Jim Baker going to to jail and Tammy Faye Baker having to apply her own makeup. Uh, And we all know what kind of nightmare that was. But start the clock. Uh, This thing is going to... Well, then let's hope, Glenn Beck, you should donate to make this happen. Uh, No, I'm not. Come on. I mean... I I, I don't warn... If he would only get five bucks from everybody, we could get rid of Glenn Beck in a very short time. No, because I'm guessing if everyone gave him five bucks... He'd do just fine, I think, to get this thing funded and to run it and to funnel the money uh, to himself and uh, other people. I think a lot of people are going to get ripped off. A lot of investors. this is one of Glenn Beck's things that will never materialize. I don't know, man. Ah, this is never going to happen. Um, All right, it's your time's up. Never underestimate uh, uh, venture capital's ability to make bad decisions. After all, there are folks funding Clear Channel Radio. Right that's Bama. I'm just saying. Uh, so write down the date or send me a hate email or something. Send it to Gmail so it'll always be around. I'm telling you at some point, people are going to go to jail over this program. I guess with the caveat, if it ever materializes. Maybe it'll disappear like Glenn Beck's blackboard. Who knows? Speaking of disappearing, it's my time to go to the show.com. It's got show archives. Uh, contact info all taken care of the Bradshaw show uh, dot com drop me an email radio Bradshaw at gmail dot com and I will see you find folks on on Twitter where I'll I don't know say snarky things to Chuck Grassley at uh, radio Bradshaw twitter dot com slash radio Bradshaw sign up uh, stop by and say hello we'll reconvene tomorrow at one thirty here on the Bradshaw show webcast one live thanks for watching see you then. <laughs>